Hi guys, it's Joe here from Rufio. Welcome to the channel. If this is not your first time here, you should definitely hit subscribe before you continue and realize how absolutely fucking garbage this content is. If this is not your first time on the channel, well, welcome back. You may have some thinking to do about your priorities. But in either case, thank you very much for coming along. I do really appreciate you being here. So today we are going to be looking at Invoked Shadol. I've got a deck profile to bring you. Unfortunately, not a physical one. As we all know, there's some limitations about social interaction at the moment. So we're bringing you something purely online to look at. I will, however, go through the deck list and give you an idea of why I've made what choices I have made and all of that good nonsense. If you are inspired at the end of this video to go ahead and pick up the deck yourself, you may want to check out the singles on Jam Jam Cards UK. They are the channel sponsor and there's a link in the description for a nice cheeky discount on their eBay store. But that's enough nonsense from me. Thank you very much for coming along. We're going to get stuck right in to the video for you now. Okay, so this is my updated Invoke Shadol list for those of you who are interested in continuing the fun and shenanigans that happened earlier on this year with this deck. Was it this year or was it last year? I can't remember. But either way, we know that both of these have got some cult following, so smacking them together seems like a pretty good idea for a deck. Yep, we're pro fusion round here, so let's go ahead and look at some fusion goodness in this deck. So we start off with triple copies of Alistair. I think this is pretty self explanatory. This is the single biggest fucking hand trap magnet in this game. You'll know what I mean if you've ever played it. Every motherfucker gets thrown at this thing. So, uh, Alistair, really important to have a three of. And to go along with that, we do have three copies of Invoked, which we'll get to, uh, Invoked Invocation, which we'll get to in a minute. Uh, and I'll explain all of that later on. So three copies of Alistair Invoker. Again, pretty self-explanatory in my opinion. I think you have to play it in three. It's your best normal summon in the deck, hands down. We move on to our Shinol package. It's actually a relatively large one here because we've got so many different fusion spells that we can keep resolving them uh, and keep sort of churning through all of these. And I think that that's a sort of really good option to go with. So we've got two copies of Beast here. Uh, just being able to draw cards is nice. Uh, Squamata here, being able to just send other cards. Again, it's nice. Two copies seems absolutely fine to me um the thing to to remember with these is that the actual shadows themselves can be kind of bricky in and of themselves of course they're only good when you've got other fusion spells really so what we wanted to do was sort of uh, maximize out on getting the best possible ones at all given scenarios we've got two copies of wendy because you know setting stuff back is always nice two copies of hedgehog you know what hedgehog does uh we have one copy of falco here i think falco's fine on its own it's more or less here just for being able to use alka fibrax and just generating free resources uh so that's all that that's really for. We're not actually doing any synchro plays in here. We are just trying to get some advantage off that, really. We have one copy of Dragon because back row removal is nice, but at the moment it's kind of neither here nor there. Most of the decks that are playing back row, um, destroying their stuff doesn't really make a difference because most of it has graveyard effects, so it doesn't really matter to them all that much. But having the option there in case you get like a, a sticky card that you have to deal with, this can just sort of help you get over that line. And then we have one copy of Ariel just for sort of graveyard control and that kind of good stuff. There are some decks where this is absolutely insane against and somewhere it doesn't really do anything at all. Um, so it's one of those cards that, again, just having the option to go into is, is nice to have there, but it is just a utility card. And then we move on to our hand traps. I think these are pretty self-explanatory here. We've got three copies of Ash Blossom and Joyous Spring and then the Gamma and Driver package you could fit infinite impermanence into here as well if you wanted to i just didn't really know what i would cut in favor of that i think the gamma is just so much stronger at the moment that you need to have it mained um and, and sort of creating that space would uh would mean having to omit probably something like this to sort of it allow us to go into the likes of infinite impermanence but again really really strong you want this for time one most of the time you're going to end up sliding this out after game one it does also double up as the fact that you can use it as a construct target so there is that to keep in mind we've got three copies of shadol fusion this card's absolutely insane of course if you go in second you absolutely want to see this in your hand but even going first it's got its relative strengths and of course the fact that we've now got predator plant vert anaconda means that you can just tutor it out from the deck which is always a nice touch we've got double copies of el shadol fusion you could potentially again go up to three with this being a quick play is really really nice it means you can do fusions during your opponent's time which is absolutely insane in fact a lot of the time that is how you're going to win games with this deck uh, being able to push for added damage being able to set up really important cards after your battle phase or at the end of your battle phase all that kind of good stuff 
You can go through a lot of your plays and then flip it over and make Winder at the end so that you lock your opponent for the next turn. Just a really, really good option to have in there. I think the two is absolutely fine, although you could, again, potentially play up to three if that's something you wanted to do. And we have triple copies of Invocation. This is something I alluded to earlier. A lot of the time you traditionally play just a couple of copies of these. However, a lot of the time your Alistair is going to get hand trapped. And what you don't want is to summon your Alistair, get hand trapped, and your turn just ends. Having the third copy of Invocation means you're more likely to open it. And by doing so, it means that you can still resolve those effects and go through your invoked plays as you would need to. This is something I've learned as a hard lesson from playing Invoke Dogmatica. Having the third invocation is really, really important in the modern format, especially with Call by the Grave only being at one and not being able to punish your opponent or sort of hit their hand traps uh, in response means that having the third invocation is just so much more valuable than it would be normally. And we have triple copies of Magical Meltdown, protecting your fusions and their effect, being able to search Alistair, what's not to like. It's a really important field spell for the deck. Most people would argue if you're going to hear any part of this engine, this would be the one to go, and we need to maximize on it while it's still there and available for us. We have triple copies of triple tactics talent. Again, I think as a three of, it's really important. With Call by the Grave being at one, we want a way to sort of hit our opponent. We don't have cross out designated yet. And this is just a way of sort of regenerating those resources you lose by your opponent stopping your turn. If your Alistair gets hit, there's a chance that you can activate something like this and draw into that invocation or draw into another card that allows you to continue to play. You can also punish your opponent in many other ways. But of course, that is just one example of utility of this card. And I think in this kind of deck, it's really, really important to have in here. We have double copies of droplets. You could quite easily make this three. You could easily cut this for impermanences if you don't have access to this card. The utility on this is absolutely bonkers. I don't need to tell you how insane this is. Just play with it. You'll see the interaction there with all the shadows, with your with everything, in fact. It's just fucking insane. This card is really, really good. Again, if I could make it three and create the extra space, that is something I would consider doing. I felt two was enough, though. A lot of the time, there are going to be games as well where you feel that this doesn't really offer you any benefit, and you can just side it out quite easily anyway. But for most games, this is going to cover your bases. A really, really cool card. But again, if you can't afford it, there are other options out there that you could consider using instead. One call by the grave. This card is still absolutely insane. Really, really powerful. Again, it should be at three. In my opinion, it's not powerful enough to be on the list. But, you know, Konami's going to do what Konami's going to do. And it's at one at the moment. So we should definitely take advantage of that. Don't be deterred by the fact that it's a one of. It's a power spell. Take full advantage of it. There are plenty of other one-offs that you would still play in this deck, and you'll see some of them coming up. Foolish Burial, what do I need to add to this? Uh, dumb stuff into Grave, and in this deck, it's absolutely insane. Mystic Mine, everyone's favorite card. Yeah, you probably fucking hate it. You can cut this for another droplet if you want. However, I like to just have free game ones. I like to have free game ones. I don't care if that upsets people. I don't care if you don't like it. Try it. Tell me you don't win more games just by having this in your deck. People just don't have outs to it. They just don't main them. So you just get free win game one. What's not to like? If your moral victory involves losing your games, have fun. And then we move on to terraforming. We play field spells, so there's absolutely no reason to play it. Uh, not to play it, I should say. If I could play three, I'd be playing three. And then on to our trap lineup. I've been trying out Chanel Core. I thought that it was a nice, cool option to have in there. If nothing else, you can send it uh, and book it into the grave and go from there. Book it. Foolish burial it. Can you tell I'm tired? We have one copy of Resh Shadol Incarnation. This is just for a bit of utility play. Again, if you play with the deck, you'll see the value of this as you play through those plays. I think it's a really cool card to have, just as a one-off, and it's absolutely fine. And then one of my favorite cards from the more recent set, Shadol Schism. Really, really cool card. Of course, we've seen it being used in other decks, but in this deck, it has added utility. You could potentially play more copies of this, but I think one is absolutely fine. Uh, again, just the one is more than enough to get your plays going in the way that you want to. Being able to make windows and stuff in your opponent's turn feels pretty good. And then we move on to the extra deck. Uh, two copies of Shadol Construct. I think two is fine. You really don't need the third, nor do you have the space for the third, quite frankly. Uh, two copies of Winder. Again, you're going to cycle through these. You could potentially actually up this to three because a lot of the time you're going to out your opponent using this card. The unfortunate thing is that, again, we don't really have the space. You could omit some other cards to go through that line of play, though. We have one copy of At Cologne. This is a really, really good card, especially for cycling through with uh, Shadol Schism and that kind of thing, being able to, to sort of set up plays for further down the line, being able to negate cards on the field, that kind of good stuff. Just a really, really cool card. And I think a one-off is absolutely fine. And then on to our Invoked Fusions. We're just playing the three of them. One copy of Mecha, but again, I'd love to play more copies, but frankly, you don't really have the space for it. So one is more than fine. Uh, we move on. We've got Ogoedes. Again, I think that this card is highly undervalued. 
Highly, highly undervalued. Every time I've ever played this in any deck, it's been absolutely insane. If you watch my Invoke Dogmatica deck profiles, I'll talk more about it in there. But you really do just punish your opponent because they don't read cards, and this just helps you get there. And of course, the fact that it's absolutely massive when you banish stuff from the grave, just really, really cool card. And one copy of Purgatrio, just punishing your opponent for committing too much to the board with not enough protection. You can wipe out your opponent in one turn with this card alone. Absolutely insane. I think that, again, one copy is absolutely fine. We don't really have space for more. And I don't think you really need more than that in any way. On to our links. We have Almirage and we have Secure Garden. And these are for the Alistair play. You summon it. You link it off twice. You've now got access to Mecha Belt or Purgatrio, depending on what you need. You've got more stuff in your grave. Yada, yada, yada. You already know. If you don't know, play with the deck and you'll see exactly what's meant by this one copy of cross sheet we are playing a fusion based deck so why not abuse the fact that we've got access to all this free material who doesn't like pluses this card gets you there just generates so much advantage it does so much for your board it just helps you link climb so much quicker just a really really good card one copy of Halka Firebrax, much for the same reason as we played Cross Sheet. We're not actually doing any Synchro plays in this, nor does it matter that we're not. You could put Synchros in there if you want to add that utility to the deck. I really don't think it's needed. Let's just get some free materials here, thin out the deck, and be able to link climb again a little bit quicker. One copy of Vert Anaconda. You already know where this is going. This is a fusion deck. What's not to love? Being able to dump Shadol Fusion from the deck and so on and so forth. Absolutely insane. Being able to Shadol Fusion basically at any time is really nice utility. Something that the deck hasn't had before this card was around. Hell of a lot better to make use of. And again, really important part of this deck as long as it's available to us. And then we go on to Celine. Celine is basically there to just go up into Access Code Talk. You already know the play with that. And again, if you don't, go out and look it up. It is out there for all to see. Uh, Access Code Talk just wins games on its own we dump a lot of different attributes in here we got fire light earth water uh yeah dark we've got it all we've got a lot of pops on board here the fact that it gets massive it's basically power crap borrow sword but again if you don't have access to this you have borrow sword in and you can drop Celine altogether you probably don't need it at that stage so it's not as quick to link up into um but again i think access code on its own just a, a game winning card so if you've got access to it you should absolutely be playing it unfortunately we're not doing any side deck bits for today uh, there isn't really much point again because it depends on what you're playing and if you're playing in online remote duels and that kind of thing you're probably going to want the best cards you can get hold of and that kind of thing but again it's also what you have access to if you've played in online tournaments on like unofficial simulators and things and you've got access to anything so you can play whatever you want it does really depend on what meta you're playing in and again what cards you have access to at that time and that is all for today's video. Thank you very much for coming along, guys. Hopefully you have enjoyed the video. But the fact that you made it this far, I assume you have. And hopefully you'll have hit subscribe at this point. We do all kinds of good content on this channel. And by good content, I mean absolute fucking garbage. We do deck profiles, combo tutorials, how to play videos, all of that good nonsense. If there's something you would like to see on the channel, definitely reach out and let me know. And if you are looking to pick up any of the singles from this video, you should definitely check out Jam Jam Cards UK. Link in the description for a cheeky discount on their eBay store. Thank you very much for coming along, guys, and I will see you in the next one. This content is brought to you in association with my buddies over at Jam Jam Cards UK. You can find the links to the eBay store and the Facebook page in the description.